battle over taxes, uh, spending cuts, um, it's all in there. Uh, what are we looking at this morning and when the, when the White House finally releases this formal budget that uh, everyone got a brief look at on Friday? It's funny, there will be thousands of pages released with uh, President Obama's budget proposal to Congress. We'll all spend a lot of time looking through it, um, the ins and the outs, how it affects this program and that. It's important to remember, though, that while there will be detailed line items down to, you know, several decimal points, this is not going to become law. None of this is going to become law. At best, it will shape whatever the budget is for next year on the margins. But mostly this is a political statement about what President Obama values and what he would do if he were reelected. And Laura, what, what are those basic uh, concepts that we'll probably hear about during the, the presidential campaign as we get closer to November? President Obama is promoting two ideas that are uh, difficult to talk about at the same time, sort of upfront spending to stimulate the economy. That includes renewing the payroll tax cut that is now set to expire at the end of this month. It includes billions of dollars for infrastructure, hundreds of billions of dollars for infrastructure investment, that sort of thing. At the same time, he's talking about deficit reduction. His deficit reduction does not do any of the super painful things that will probably be needed for Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. He suggests um, fixes for those health care programs sort of on the margins. But perhaps most strikingly, he's doubling down on his proposal to increase taxes in order to deal with the deficit. He has $1.5 trillion worth of tax increases over 10 years. Most of that falls on the wealthiest Americans. And Laura, in your piece that you've written, you say that not only will the uh, budget that's released today set up some battle lines in the election year, but even beyond that, what do you mean, what are we going to be looking for? What are this, the key issues that uh, they'll be fighting over here? Well, the interesting thing is that while, as I've just said, and you'll hear from many other people over the course of the day, that this is largely a political document, this actually does have some real world impact when we get to the end of this year. At the end of this year, after the elections, we're going to be facing a bunch of deadlines. The Bush era tax cuts are set to expire. There'll have to be a decision about what to do about that. President Obama favors letting them expire for families earning over $250,000 a year and renewing them for everybody below that. Um, we're also going to be facing what's known as uh, the sequester. It was set into law at, over the summer that there would be over a trillion dollars of, of additional spending cuts beyond the first trillion that we've already put into law, another trillion dollars, half of which would fall on the defense, on defense spending. Those are very unpopular. If there isn't an alternative put into place, if Congress doesn't do something to stop them, those will hit in 2013. So those are a couple of the things that are going to happen at the end of this year, which really we're going to end up with a big, big set of decisions to make. And what President Obama is putting forward today will be a, a roadmap to his opening position in those talks. And Laura, when you say that, you know, when we go forward and, as you say, whoever becomes president in November, the, the kind of right after the election, uh, you've got all these huge issues going on. But before that, it seems that whoever becomes the Republican nominee, that person is going to have uh, uh, budget ideas, tax and spending ideas that are going to be markedly different than what's set out in this document. So I think perhaps at a minimum, you know, American voters are going to have a pretty clear choice. Absolutely. And that's exactly how it's being set up. President Obama is very clear about the fact that he thinks that everybody needs to do as he would say their fair share in order so everybody can get what he would call a fair shake. It's a very middle class oriented argument. And he has been very clear that he thinks taxes need to go up on the upper income in order to in order to fill the holes. So that's something that's in strike in contrast to all the Republican presidential candidates. They don't think taxes should go up at all. So that's going to be one of the key, key issues in the election this year.